Hello YouTube! In the expeditions and exploration trips of the UFACOM project, which Belarus explorers of the paranormal phenomena have been conducting for 20 years or more actually, they have to face a variety of stories, sometimes very fantastic looking from the outside. Some of the stories are really come to them piecemeal and it's like if someone's figment of a sick imagination materialized and disappeared into oblivion. So a few years ago the UFACOM already told about the Neanderthal on a stick so to say, a creature like an uh, abominable snowman, looking awkward so to say, like a Cheshire cat that has not fully manifested. Who would have thought that all this time a similar message from the same region was gathering dust in the archives of the researchers of anomalous phenomenon? Let me briefly um, recall the background of that story. A mushroom picker turned to Ufakam who approximately in 2013 in the vicinity of the village of Kulakova, Vitebsk district encountered with a creature whose lower part reminded him of a tree trunk to which a strange monkey-like, ape-like, hairy head seemed to be attached. That is, he did not see any arms or legs, but only a thin, bl thin black something with a head. So, what was that newly discovered message that they referred to? It was a letter under the number 1984-317 from a resident of the Russian city of Khabarovsk, that's in the Far East, uh, by the name of Gerasim Matveyevich Levanchuk, who came to the Moscow branch of the Commission for Anomalous Phenomenon on August 6, 1984. Now, this was an official organization for the study of anomalous phenomena in the USSR but not the secret military academic program I have described in my books and lectures. This organization was a variety of information vacuum cleaner. It was created with the purpose of obtaining reports about the paranormal from the population, although of course officially the communist government did not recognize any paranormal phenomenon. Anyway, let's continue. Although most of the letters from the archive concerning the observations of strange creatures were subsequently handed over to the hominologists, those who study hominoids and related cryptozoology, and disappeared without a trace, this letter somehow miraculously remained. Probably this strong remoteness from the main groups stationed at that time to verify such reports, as well as the time of the reported event, 1929. All this had an effect. Here is the full text of the letter f um, that the Belarus researchers found. As for the archives of the commission, we, those who study Soviet paranormal phenomena research, in earnest, still do not know who has most of those files collector to the years, but it's not hard to guess. Now, I will edit the letter so that uh, people who have not lived in the Soviet Union understand what realities the author refers to and to make it easier. So, here it goes. On March 18, 1984, I watched the TV program Travel Club. The host, Sinkevich, was having a conversation with a French scientist and uh, they showed abominable snowmen and then it immediately hit me that I had to have seen this uh, creature before and in this shape but he, the creature that I saw, twisted his head and without bending his arms at the elbows waved his arms and ran like a good athlete. Um, this case occurred in the Bransk uh, district close to Belarus in 1929 in the month of October in Krasnogorsk district of Medvedevsky village council settlement of Drazhinsk. 
it turned out like this around midnight the women went to the um, uh, area uh, of the mill to mash flax on wooden mashers and my father woke me to take the horses to graze I took two horses watered them near the well and led them with my hands so it was only 200 meters to grazing only 70 to 60 meters remained until the end when suddenly a strange and terrible man began to run across his eyes burned like electric bulbs and his whole foot shone from the knees he shook his head at me and waved his hands forward without bending his elbows his appearance was all black but I was struck by his eyes they lit up his face my horses got scared stopped raised their heads and pricked up their ears but I was scared myself but since he was running I got the energy and he was on my right side when I came out of the road he wasn't there I began to look where he had gone in a few seconds it was a moonlit night and suddenly I see there's a birch tree a vine bush near the birch and a shadow near this bush more like other bushes I took my five steps towards and shouted hold him he jumped out from under the bush and began to run towards the big swamp along the path and I had to see him from the left side he ran across a small clearing the moon illuminated him he didn't shake his head he didn't have a stomach one spine a neck of 10 centimeters hair on his head up to half of the neck dangled from behind in all likelihood the tail was 20 centimeters I didn't hear any sounds from him he did everything on the sly when he ran away from me he didn't look back his knees creaked from behind and it was clear that he was like iron all the veins and muscles were tense it's hard to it's hard to describe everything that's who he is and you can know more the place of events described by the eyewitness is located near the border with the Gomel region of Belarus but from Russia from the Russian side 4.5 kilometers east of the village of Medvedi. This village was resettled after the Chernobyl nuclear accident. The above mentioned observation site is located to the north, also near the border between the Vityabsk region of Belarus and the Smolensk region of Russia. The distance between the points is about 230 kilometers. It should be said right away that hominologists, that is those who study um, cases of encounters with the abominable snowman immediately disowned this creature and said that it was not their client so to say fortunately that's why the letter still reached Belarus researchers so Burtsev a well-known Russian Yeti or abominable snowman research expert told the Belarus researchers that he's not interested in this at all so let's keep in mind that it definitely does not belong to the relics of the ancient people continuing to study the literature um, about the abominable snowman and the folklore of the Belarusian Russian borderland the Belarus researchers however have not yet anything remotely similar they could not find and they looked no one has seen such weirdos or collected information about them at once you can only recall the classic Leshy and also about the character of Belarusian mythology Vadun about whose appearance folklorists managed to record surprisingly little information but most of the modern fixations of Vadun turned out to be in the Vityabsk and Grodno regions from the few descriptions so far it can be concluded that the image of Vadun in Belarus emerges with the images of the classic Leshe or devil and also not quite the same the Leshe or he from the forest 
is a tutelary deity of the forest in pagan Slavic mythology. Tutelary is a deity, deity or spirit who is a guardian, pa patron or protector of a particular place, geographic feature, person, lineage, nation, culture or occupation. According to the folklorist uh, researcher of the lore, Gennady Lapatin, who works at the F.G. Shklarov uh, Vietkovsky Museum of Old uh, Believers and Belarusian Traditions, an unusual creature can be counted among the so-called Dabrahoji, stories about which are recorded in this region. The Dabrahoji, or good walkers, are representatives of the lowest mythology, combining the qualities of a Damavoy, a Leshi, and a number of other characters. In the Slavic religious tradition, Damavoy, um, in English it means one of the household, is the household spirit of a given kin. Although the classic image of Dabrahoji in most cases is different, more like an ordinary person, more often it's depicted in expensive clothes. Interestingly, the appearance of this mythical people in some cases is modern to those who report the stories. It is noted that at the turn of the 20th, yes, 21st centuries, the Prohoji dressed like bosses in expensive jackets or jackets with shiny, most often gold buttons. You have to understand where the descriptions come from, the thickets of the forests. Uh, the uh, backwoods of Belarus and so forth. But at the beginning of the 20th century, in the eastern part of the Belarusian Palesia, some Dabrahoje look like hairy men. There is a story about the Dabrahoje given by Lapatin in his article on the folk demonology of the Belarusian Bransk borderland. The person who reported this was 9 or 10 years old when he and other boys were grazing horses at night. In the pre-dawn hours, they saw a man standing with long arms and hair all over his body. He was stalking the horse, playing with the reins. The witness called out to the other boys, but the man disappeared. This was recorded in 1992 from a person who was born in 1917 and resided in the Gomel district. Considering the year of the witness's birth, it can be concluded that the meeting with the hairy and long-armed creature occurred approximately in 1927-1928. That is almost at the same time as Gerasim Levanchuk reported. However, the character clearly has infernal features and cannot be considered as a creature of flesh and blood in any way. Although there are no complete coincidences in the entire body of texts about the Dabrahoje from this part of the Belarusian Polesia, with what the eyewitness described in his letter to the Commission for Anomalous Phenomena, it is worth mentioning that, uh, for example, Baganiva of the Center for Research of Belarusian Culture, Language and Literature of the National Academy of Sciences in Belarus, she also doubts that this was a Dabrahoji. She personally recorded stories about this mythological creature in the Krasnogorsk and Novozabkovsky districts of the Bransk region, as well as the border areas of the Gomel region of Belarus. Nevertheless, the Dabrahoji almost always have the features of an ordinary man, and there are almost no metal body parts, with the exception of metal buttons and clothes. Perhaps that ape-like creature got into the article of Lapatin by mistake, along with a large body of other more classical texts. There is another character, though more characteristic of the central Palesia. He is usually called the Iron Man, Zhelezny Chelovek, and they most often frightened children, like an Iron Woman also was used for that. He might well have had metal body parts, although if you look into it, the original record only mentions that the creature was like iron and moved strangely without bending its arms at the elbows, 
but whether there were iron parts on it, it's not directly written. In addition, the Iron Man almost always lives in a swamp, and his very local distribution area is still to the west. Although it initially seemed to the Belarus researchers a sound idea to correlate the Levanchuk described being with the Iron Man, none of the researchers of the UFOCAM interviewed who worked in the field of the research on the territory of Palesia, none of them saw any remote connection. As suggested by Boganeva, perhaps this is a single such record and it is simply impossible to take it anywhere. Or maybe the child has heard enough of some horror stories and this something that came out of nowhere was just a product of his fears. At the same time, the being described by Levanchuk with stiff arms has many features inherent in the classical evil spirits. For example, shiny eyes like headlights or electric bulbs, which the Belarus researchers have already paid attention to e earlier in another publication devoted to stories about poltergeists in the Pskov Estonian border area. I will describe them in another video. It should also be taken into account that at the beginning of the 20th century folklore in this region was recorded fragmentally and very little such information has reached our days. Perhaps if the characters were polymorphic and changed under the influence of the new ideas about them, then such information simply did not survive. If we had records not of the 1980s and 1990s, but of the 1930s and 1940s, then it is likely that there would be much more memories of such terrible bogeymen. In the meantime, almost everyone has disowned the strangely moving Neanderthal with his head almost uh, on, on, on one spine. Hominologists, folklorists, anomalists, and members of the Commission for the Research of Anomalous Phenomena as well. So this creature remained unattended and not classified in any way, except that it can be called an evil spirit without much difficulty. It would seem, well, let it go, it would seem so, except for that encounter in 2013 described by the mushroom picker, which made the Belarus researchers think, are there more creatures of this type preserved? in the original form somewhere else in the Belarusian forests. I have to tell you, I, I remember my youth in the Soviet Ukraine and the time I spent in the summer pioneer camps, for example, exchanging stories with uh, children of my age who came from other parts of the Soviet Union, Eastern Europe, for example, like Belarus, um, other areas of Ukraine and um, we didn't have too many Russians mostly mostly Ukrainians and the stories they told of creatures that had been encountered in the forests or live in the um, tunnels below their villages of course you can definitely think that most of it is fantasy but remember in the Soviet Union we were not exposed to tabloids and uh, a lot of similar literature or, or worldwide cases. We had our own very interesting paranormal phenomena, but you know, it wasn't easy to find out about such things, as I say in my uh, videos, and I'll tell more. And the Belarus itself has incredible forests, and uh, there are things in, in, in those forests. I, I've known people from Belarus, some of my best friends actually were from Belarus and I'm proud of that for many years. And of course, I was much older by then and we, 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 we heard of very interesting stories. I will continue to bring you information from the Belarus and other researchers of the former Soviet Union and hopefully the information I bring forth will add to the richness of the unknown phenomena of our planet. So if you like my research, uh, please uh, help me through the links you will find in the description to this 
video thank you for your attention please subscribe to my channel please like my videos